Hey guys, so as a boudoir photographer about six years now, I have experienced a lot of different personalities in my studio, some of them good, some of them bad, but I wanted to make a video regarding some of the most important things that you have to put in your contract because of some of the bad experiences that I had in the studio. Sometimes you think it's like common sense, uh, but you just never know. Clients come up with all types of weird reasons and all types of weird complaints that you have to make sure that you're protected. So I'm just going to go over what I feel like is really important to put in your contract and I'm not going to go into details and a lot of the stuff that is standard for most contracts, for instance, like the retainer uh, and things like that, stuff that I think that you know should be in all encompassing of all contracts, whether you shoot portraits or babies or weddings, okay? So of course for me, um, I take a retainer payment and the retainer is non-refundable, uh, but I recently had a client where I took the retainer payment and I think like maybe like a day or two later she wanted to cancel and she wanted the retainer back and her excuse was that she um, didn't think that I should keep the retainer because she only canceled like two days after so I had to put in my contract that no matter when they pay a retainer it um, there it is non-refundable you know even if they pay it you know a day later uh, or two days later it doesn't matter um, so you have to kind of make it specific for some reason like you would think that Saying that it's non-refundable is enough, but it's not enough. You know, I would also put maybe an initial area right next to it, so that way they understand um, that they read it and um, they initialed it. Right? My cancellation policy is um, five days before they have to give me a written notice. If I am traveling from out of town or something like that, I might do something like seven business days, and uh, you want to make sure that's specific for seven business days because you're traveling out of town. You've already probably incurred travel expenses because of that. Uh, and so that way you want to have a longer time before they can cancel because my cancellation is that if they cancel within that timeline, they owe me 50% of the session fee. Uh, however, if they do reschedule, then they can take that session fee or whatever they have paid and that goes towards a credit towards their reschedule. I also stipulate that there is a reschedule fee uh, and I do enforce that if I am coming from out of town. I might not enforce it very much if like, for instance, it's in the town where I live and I already have a studio in Sacramento, you know, something like that. Uh, I might not enforce it as much, but say if I'm traveling to a different city, I will enforce it because at that point I might have paid a makeup artist already. I might have booked a hotel. I might have booked a, uh, a studio already and all that stuff is stuff that I've already incurred and if they reschedule, I have to book those things again. Uh, so I do uh, have in there that I will res charge them a reschedule fee up to their session fee cost. Uh, so make sure that you have that area where they can initial as well. A shoot location. I also put down in my contract that my shoot location can change at any time at my discretion because you know you might book like a studio and then for some reason that studio does not work out so you have to book another location so it's just easier to stipulate that you know what my location may change so they don't have their heart set on like a specific place. Okay, props, I do say that I have to have props approved because you just never know what they're gonna bring in the studio and some people just have crazy ideas. Uh, so you know, you wanna, as your photographer yourself, you wanna make sure that you are safe and um, your safety is very important. So just things like that, you know, you have to let them know to disclose that to you so that way they, you can approve it before they come in and try to shoot with it, especially if it's a prop that you've never worked with before. Uh, I put down regarding uh, a reviewing fee. So like for instance, if they view their photos, the first time is usually free, right? Because that is all encompassing of the session fee. Uh, but like say for instance, they view their photos and they didn't pick any photos at all. Well, I will make them pay a reviewing fee if they need to review it more than like a few different times. I might like allow them to do the second viewing again for no cost, but like the third time and the fourth time, every single time they do reviewing, that is costing me time and money, so I charge them a reviewing fee if they do that. Um, some clients, very, very rare, will come back maybe like six months later and want to buy more photos. So during that time, if they're going to buy more photos, I probably won't charge them a reviewing fee, but I do put it in my guidelines or my contract that, I, that it could be charged, okay? Um... I put into image processing very, you know, as before I feel like more people expect you to do a lot of Photoshop. So you want to make sure that you put in your image processing what your policy is regarding Photoshop so that the way they know this is what it encompasses. And if they require more things, that's going to take you hours from the computer, what you're going to charge for that. Okay. Um, 
For the delivery of images, you want to make sure it's very, very important that you put down that they nothing will be delivered unless you have all final payment. Uh, because you know sometimes they will order something, they won't pay for it, and they expect it, or you know they come to the session, they forgot to pay, or something like that. So you just want to make sure that you receive all final payments before um, you can deliver anything. And then I also put down that once they receive their files digitally, because I send it to them via their email, and they download it, uh, and once I they go in and they put in their email saying they are looked at the photos that takes a sign that they received their photos I put down that it's non-refundable or uh, no exchanges after that because you don't know they might go look at their photos and say oh I actually didn't really want that photo I want a different photo well then I refer them back to the contract and say well actually I see that you already logged into your gallery uh, therefore you already received the photos and per your contract it is non-refundable or no exchanges if you do want the additional photo then you have to purchase it basically because you know once they receive it, that means they purchased it, and I have no idea if they downloaded it, they printed it already, things like that. So you have to put that in there. Archival, I think with Boudoir, you have to really be specific about regarding your archival. For me, it says 60 days after the viewing. And unless they purchase something, then usually I try to keep it for maybe a year just in case. Um, but if they don't purchase anything, I do say that you know I will delete it after 30 days. That gives them uh, more of an incentive and a rush to get those in um, so that way I don't delete them and plus with bar photos they're very intimate and you don't want to keep them for very long because you just don't know if they're going to get out there somehow um, and a lot of clients are concerned about that because you know there might be teachers or something like that so they don't want their photos to be out there in the world okay and then the other important thing I think is privacy. Uh, you want to make sure you have an area for privacy and what your privacy policy is. For me, I do not share any photos unless they approve it. So I give them little options to check areas uh, whether they'll let me share the photos or not. And most of my clients don't let me share the photos, and that's totally fine. Uh, but you know, this gives an area for them to be able to tell me if they allow me to share them or not. The other thing is regarding escorts. Um, escorts are people that not not escorts you know like come to, come to shoot but who they bring into the studio for me I say that they only are allowed one friend into the studio because I've had clients before that brought more than one friend and it just became a big mess because everybody wanted to pose the client and uh, so I just allow one friend that comes in the studio and then I also say no children believe it or not I've had clients that have brought their children before um, which you would think that that's common sense but some people it is not, you know, so make sure you put that in there so that way they can find a babysitter and they're not distracted during their session. Okay, so those are all the important items I feel like you should have in your contract. Hopefully that helps you out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to keep on more random photography, mom stuff, things about my life. Um, I will talk to you next time.